The president of the European Commission has said a united Europe will prevail over Russian President Vladimir Putin. In her annual State of the Union address to the European Parliament, Ursula von der Leyen said Europe had shown courage and strength following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and that much was at stake, not just for Ukraine, but also for Europe and the world. The Commission President said Russia's war on Ukraine was also a war on Europe's economy and its values. Much is at stake, not just for Ukraine, but for all of Europe and the world at large. And we will be tested, tested by those who want to exploit any kind of division between us. And this is not only a war unleashed by Russia against Ukraine. This is also a war on our energy. It's a war on our economy. It's a war on our values. It is a war on our future. It is about autocracy against democracy. And I stand here with a conviction that with the necessary courage and with the necessary solidarity, Putin will fail, and Ukraine and Europe will prevail. Well, our correspondent, Alexandra von Neumann, followed that speech in Strasbourg and gave us her thoughts. Well, I think we have to say that this speech that we heard today was totally different from the one that we heard here last year when the mood was more optimistic with the COVID-19 restrictions being eased, with the vaccination drive in full swing and the economy growing again. Now the European Union has to deal with the brutal war on its doorsteps and it's facing a severe energy crisis. So those are the challenges that Ursula von der Leyen addressed in her speech. That speech, however, still was a message, sending a message of solidarity and courage, as we just heard, because she was trying to convince her audience that Europe can prevail as long as the European Union and their member states are standing together. And the, the war in Ukraine has prompted changes in all sorts of ways across the bloc, amongst which um, uh, Ursula von der Leyen has talked about an electricity uh, market reform. Let's just listen in. In these times, it is wrong to receive extraordinary record revenues and profits benefiting from war and on the back of our consumers. In these times, profits must be shared and channeled to those who need it most. Profits must be shared and channeled to those who need it most. Um, how, how united is Europe in terms of energy uh, policy, Alexandra? Well, when we talked specifically about this one proposal to put kind of tax or levy on windfall uh, profits uh, of companies they, that do produce electricity at a lower price but are still profiting from the soaring gas prices, that is something that I think member states can agree on, that those uh, companies um, have to, to sort of pay a price for that, that there should be a kind of tax on their profits that could be then channeled to ordinary consumers whose bills are exploding at the moment. And I think uh, this is a major concern for all member states. However, when we continue to speak about other measures that are being discussed right now, like, for instance, a cap on gas prices or gas imports from Russia, that is something that is being discussed very controversially. And we have to say that uh, on that topic, not all member states are on board. Right, so, and, and just to pick up on, on that point, the, the uh, Commission President can outline these proposals, but they still need to be signed off by individual states. She can't say, this is what we want, and it's done. Well, I, I guess she would love to, but you're totally right, Phil, 
the member states have to sign off on that. They requested the European Commission and Ursula von der Leyen to put forward those proposals, and we are certainly going to hear more detail later today, details later today on that. But member states, all 27 of them, still have to approve those measures. And that might be a reason a bit for Ursula von der Leyen not to be very specific, very concrete in her speech, for instance, on the topic on uh, price caps, because, of course, she's aware of the fact that it is up to the member states to decide and that this one measure could be very controversial um, among the member states. And how effective has the Commission been so far in addressing um, the uh, energy concerns of uh, the 27 member countries? Well, I think we can say that uh, they have been uh, doing quite a good job so far, even though, as I said, uh, the latest measures were not uh, uh, as concrete as some member states would like them to be. However, uh, they have come forward, for instance, with this proposal for joint procurement of um, energy for all member states. That is something that is gaining some speed and that could help the European Union to be a, 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 a even a more important player on the energy market because with all the 27 member states, it is a, a sort of force to be reckoned with if they're all buying together. There are some uh, member states that are critical or a bit uh, uh, opposing uh, that, uh, but uh, overall, all, I, I think we can say that uh, they uh, have been doing quite a good job still, of course, uh, now they need to propose uh, those measures in a more concrete terms. That is something that the member states are waiting for. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Alexander. Alexander von Neumann in Strasbourg. Well, an EU cap on energy company profits could free up as much as 140 billion euros to cushion the blow of soaring inflation. That's likely to be welcome news to many households who fear cold and poverty as a result of rising energy prices. Christine Mundua reports from Belgium. The forecast is for a difficult winter in Europe. But even before the cold season arrives, households across the EU are already feeling it bite. Belgium has one of the highest energy inflation rates in the European Union and the federal government here is in talks and negotiations with the banks to try to bring relief to some of the hardest hit households by deferring mortgage payments, for example. But households here have been told that they need to brace for what will be likely several years of difficult winters ahead. For this family, it is the winter that is only weeks away that's causing the most anxiety. They are already cutting back on how much energy they use. We already replaced all the lamps for uh, LLD, and at night we're almost using this lamp. The rest is most of the, the, the most of the house is dark. We are doing the, the dishwash and the, we are using the wash machine only at night because the price of the energy is lower. So during the day, even in the weekends, we don't use these machines during the day only at night. Everything is more expensive. The fuel, the transport, uh, the supermarket, the groceries are more expensive. With the bills piling up as the cost of living soars, taxpayers in the EU are looking to their governments for help. And indeed, some EU countries have announced plans to offer relief to their populations. At their last meeting, energy and economy ministers agreed on where some of the money to pay for this help would come from. The current idea is actually to introduce kind of a profit cap to say, OK, there are certain companies, especially in the electricity field, that make a lot of profit because the prices are so high, although their costs are very low. So that one says we introduce a kind of a tax any profit that's above this will go to the government, which gives the government then the resources to subsidize certain households. But it is Russia's gas many EU countries rely on to keep the heating and lights on. And as tensions escalate between Brussels and Moscow over the war in Ukraine, it is feared Russia will completely cut off its gas supply, plunging millions into freezing darkness and Europe's economies into recession.